so we're going to pre-measure our garden. We need to figure out the, uh, the area for the silage tarps. They come in different sizes. So we want to try to probably get the largest size available. We're going to go ahead and get one of those here in probably a couple weeks. Get a broad fork, get some compost. We already got the chickens in here scratching it up, spreading their manure. So it's going to be a perfect setup. I don't want to use a tiller this year. Um, I like to get away from using a tiller period and just use a broad fork. Keep on adding organic matter to the soil. What do you think? Is that our best method? Yeah. Yeah. Tiller is just too much on the soil. We just want to not disturb what's under the soil as much as possible and using a broad fork that's the best method so we're going to pre-measure everything to see where we stand at to see what size silage tarp best fits our needs all right kayla you ready to do some measuring yeah i'm going to run the measuring wheel she's going to hammer in some stakes and hopefully not crush her fingers but it's a rubber mallet she'll be okay right yeah yeah So we got our 50 foot length measured out and our 32 foot length measured out. They also come in 24 foot. I think 24 foot is a little bit too small. I also think that 50 foot is a little bit too big. I'm probably leaning towards the 32 foot by 100 foot. So we're gonna see where 100 foot takes us. I got a good idea where it's gonna take us. So. We are gonna be downsizing our garden this year. What we did last year was just way too big. Even though we stayed on top of it, it really just burned us out, you know, with us working full time, um, farm animals to take care of. Plus the spring we got piglets coming up. So, you know, we're gonna have a lot on our plate. So we're gonna do a small garden this year. We're also gonna be doing meat birds. So we're gonna keep the garden small this year. So I did some searching and I found on Haas Tools that they have a 40 foot by 50 foot silage tarp. Perfect. That's what we need. We don't need anything that's 100 foot. I think the 40 by 50 foot is perfect for us for what we want to do this coming season. 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 Season <laughs> with our garden. You know, with us downsizing, the 40 by 50 foot is perfect. I think Mama Quack will agree with me on that. Plus, we're going to be doing some, uh, some raised beds. This is going to be separate from the garden to do herbs and such. Those are going to be uh, more closer to the house. And I'm still going to have a separate area for my watermelons. Um, I want to try to grow some Kajari melons and give it another go with some pumpkins. Our pumpkins was kind of a fail last year. Even though we had a couple good ones, I think I had a 70 pound one, which was really great for a first timer. So we're gonna go with the Haas Tools 40 foot by 50 foot solid tarp. It comes with 15 sandbags. I doubt they come with sand in them. So we'll go to our local hardware store, get sand, fill those up. Um, but yeah, looks like Haas Tools is the way to go. 40 foot by 50 foot. All right, so I'm gonna be honest with you. One of our biggest failures this year 
has been this radish and turnip field that we had tilled up. I ran my tail off planting the seeds um, for the pigs. Failure number one, the dirt never hardened back up. I was hoping we would have a colder winter, which we hadn't. The dirt is still very soft. Failure number two, for some odd reason, these pigs will not eat these turnips and radishes. Now they eat the foliage, but not the radish and turnips themselves. Now by this time of year, they should be sweet enough to where the pig just tears them up. Nope, not ours. I don't know if it's because they're spoiled on the feed that we give them. I've even backed down the feed quite a bit from the, the bare minimum amount that you're supposed to give them in hopes that this would entice them to eat the turnips and radishes. So if you look around me, it's failure. And that sometimes happens on a homestead. You fail at certain things you learn. This was probably one of the top lessons this season learned on our homestead is this will never happen again unless the pigs start showing interest, which I don't think they will. And I'll show you here in a minute. I'm gonna pick some. I don't want the pigs on here because the dirt is still so soft. I'm in it right now and I sink down in it. They'll have it tore up within a day. You add some rain on top of it and it'll just be a mess. So I figure I'll just come in here and just get what I need by hand for the pigs just to see if they'll eat it, but they don't. So yeah, this is this was a this was a, a huge fail for the homestead. It was my fault. Um I thought for sure that the pigs would enjoy the turnips and radishes and I was wrong. It could have a lot to do with the, the feed, you know? That's like us eating ice cream and then giving us Brussels sprouts. You know, that's, that's the comparison. So I'm gonna pick some for them and I'll show you what I mean. And you'll probably get a kick because they take the foliage and just toss it around in their mouth and throw it up in the air. But yeah, failure. This was a huge fail. We even paid a guy to till it. He, he charged an, an okay price, but he had to come out twice because the first time he did a bad job at tilling. So yeah, it was just the money put into it and then me running around with a spreader throwing the seeds with the spreader jerry rigged that was that was pretty hard on me first thing in the morning but i got it done everything grew um some spots down there that wasn't an old pig paddock i used some all natural fertilizer and you know to get that growing which worked great even threw in some rye grass they love the rye grass but the turnips and radishes, they just don't like. So we're gonna hand pick some, throw some in the pig pen, and we'll see what happens. Now who wouldn't like this? What pig would not like the, what pig would not like this big boy? I mean, look at it beautiful. Big succulent daikon radish. It almost wants me to take a bite out of it. Very healthy. It survived probably about 30 some frosts. 
look how green that is. Awesome. If only the pigs would eat it. My little helpers. Look at y'all. Caesar, I'm coming to help. Look at this, Papa Quack has some help. Look at this, showed up in force. Scratch away, scratch away. Look at this radish. A couple dead spots in, on the leaves, but look at that. What pig would not eat that? It's beautiful. Great size. They'll eat this. They'll take this in their mouth, sling it around, throw it everywhere, but they won't eat that. It's been cold enough to where this should be sweet enough for the pigs to just tear it up. But I just don't know, you know? I don't know what happened. I, I, I'm, I'm just speechless. I'll show you. I handpicked a whole bed full of turnips and radishes for our mangalitsas. Question is, will they eat them? Will they just play with them? They even threw in some rye grass. We'll see what happens, but yeah, a whole bed full. It's probably a couple hundred pounds worth maybe. But you gotta give it a try, you gotta just keep at it, you know? I'm not gonna let them go to waste, all the hard work I put into it. So, let's see if they will eat them. I don't know. I really just don't know. I hope they do. It's good for them. We'll see what happens. Y'all gonna be picking on me today, huh? You can eat your veggies. We got some clean ground to throw them on. Now they take interest to the green, but not to the radishes and turnips themselves. We'll see what happens. We got some nice radishes and turnips. 
Albert there found himself some ryegrass he's eating. They love some ryegrass. Look at this one. Just, it's a nice radish. It survived a lot of frosty nights. That's a good 10 inches. Yeah. Come on. Come on, boy. Get your son. There you go, Heidi. Come on, boys. Get up in there. Get your song. I told you so. They will not eat these radishes and turnips. I don't know what it is. If you guys have any tips whatsoever, please tell me. But yeah, fail. It sucks when you fail, you know, you've not only let down your family, you know, but you also let down your animals, I feel. Space of land, you know, we could, the size of where we planted the radishes and turnips could have easily been two paddocks. So that's a waste. The ground is just so soft there these pigs will tear it up in a heartbeat, especially if we have just one day of rain, it would just be a mud pit. Well, other than that, they're healthy pigs. They're spoiled. I've cut their feed back quite a bit. Um, they still get their alfalfa. They've been eating a ton of alfalfa. They've actually haven't torn up this paddock like I thought they would. They've been, they've been good pigs. I still haven't found my wedding ring, at least the original one. See, I still, I got, I got my back up. I had to order two sizes because their ring, their ring sizes were a little bit weird. So I ordered two sizes and the one that Fits great is somewhere amongst the alfalfa, if not a pig's belly. But maybe one day it'll show up, hopefully. So I don't know if I should. I don't know if I should feed these pigs tonight, or if I should just let them or coax them to eat the radishes and turnips. I've done that before. That was a failure. But I don't know. Every it's every day is a new day in farming. You never know what you're gonna get. Um I might just give them just minimal feed. I just don't know. I'm at a loss for words. I hear everyone saying that turnips and radishes, the mangalitzas just tear up. Well, I planted them. And 
I waited, I planted them at the right time. Cold weather hit. I don't know if it just didn't get cold enough and they didn't get sweet enough. But I don't think I'll plant this again. If anything, I'll plant ryegrass because they love some ryegrass. So if you look, they're just digging through it. Eat it up. Come on, Albert. Let's hope they eat it up. six hungry pigs a little bit of distraction here and there I'm gonna make the first attempt since we've had all six in the same paddock to feed them by myself usually I have Kaylee help me at night usually she comes up top here distracts them I come in from the backside with a bucket I crawl over the fence, which out of five times, I've tripped and have fallen four times with nasty fermented juice <laughs> splashed up on my face, in my mouth. It does not smell nor taste good. So they're a little bit distracted right now. I know once when I leave the camera, and go to the gate, they, they're gonna know what's up. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put the buckets on the other side of the fence, that way I can just reach over and grab one at a time. And we'll see what happens. They're good pigs. I, they get a little rough with you though, you know, they start nudging you, you know, they, they're ruled by their stomachs. Here, let's take a look here. I thought maybe the camera could maybe switch around, but I guess angry pig. Look at him. Hungry, angry. Boy, am I in for it. I am in for it. I don't know where to put the camera. Let's see here. I want to capture the entire shot. Just bear with me, guys. The fence is hitting 8,000 volts. They're not going to go through the fence. Bear with me. Yes. Here goes
knocked around a little bit, but it, it wasn't bad. It worked. Whew, it's a little out of breath. Those pigs are tough, I tell you. They are tough, but they won't hurt you. Not at all. So what I'll do now is I'll do a perimeter check, make sure there's no dirt on the fence. Help them out with their alfalfa, kick some to the five access points, and maybe find my wedding ring. So, feeding them by myself, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I didn't get really knocked around. Little they know, they are on a super strict diet. I have knocked their feed down so much. I want them to rely on the alfalfa and hopefully the turnips and radishes. But I've knocked their feed down. Let's see here. Five pounds of uh, dry feed per pig per day. I think right now they're getting, let's see here. Probably about 10 pounds to 11 pounds less per day than what their what the minimum requirement is. I want my gilts to thin out a little bit. Um. So yeah, there's no other pig I would want to raise than Mangalitsa. They are so gentle. They're caring. They're loving. They're probably, I mean, it's my first time I've ever owned a pig, but I, I don't think I would own another pig other than the Mangalitsa. Ain't that right? Are you done eating? No? Uh -huh. You done eating? What number are you? Number 20. Hmm? Hannah. Hannah, we hope, is pregnant. I'm quite certain she is. You sleepy? Boris here. He's our pure red. He is one stout pig. I mean, you, it's just nothing but muscle. I mean, he is stout. Stout. Oh, we got Harriet. Jealous Harriet wants attention. All right, here's Harriet. Oh. Nope, sorry, I got you all mixed up. This is Harriet. Oh, I feel so bad, Harriet. I feel so bad. Uh huh. I feel so bad, Harriet. I'm sorry. Oh, Heidi wants attention too. Heidi's our other sw swallow belly. I got, oh. What was that that just hit my face when you shook your head? Ugh. <laughs> ah, the joys of owning Mangalitzas. So, six pigs fed by one man. What? Here, come on. Come on. Come on. You want your belly rub? Oh, God. I hope I didn't roll in pig poop. I think I rolled in pig poop. Heidi's on my ankle. I can't move. There's nobody around to help. I can smell it. Heidi, help me up. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, I think I got something on me. Ooh. But here, let's try this again. Here, come on. I know you want that belly rod. Come on. I know. No, go the other way. Go the other way. I know. <laughs> there are something else. See, they are loving, they are caring animals. Just love them. Now she's on my knee. <sighs> I tell you, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's been times where it's been tough, where we've, you know, thought about, did we take too much on too fast? We've been here since January of last year and we've built this homestead up really fast probably faster than honestly what you're supposed to um, but it is what it is you just gotta keep on getting on and tomorrow's a new day Oh, look, this is Harriet. Harriet, by far, is our, the best mango we got. Here. Sorry for the camera work, but yep. We gotta say, huh? Oh, <laughs> what? We gotta say, hmm? Where's your eyes at? Daddy can just lay right down with you, huh? Who are you going to sleep? I just thought about it. I am hope. I'm hoping I'm not kneeling in pig poop. It just it just hit me. But that's okay. Cause Harry gets her back rub. And a belly rub and a neck rub. Ain't that right? Now, I hope she's pregnant. <sighs> um, if she is, I think by far she'll be the best mom. And you can tell that they do not like being on a diet. They are fighting for every scrap. Bianca Bianca's giving up. She's just laying down chilling. So we're gonna get out of here. <laughs> Area. Uh, what do you think? This is it gonna roll over?
So what you see in here, folks, is biochar. I make this here at home in my tort that I made. Now this here outside of ap apple cider vinegar is probably the best thing you want to add to your animal's feed. Why do you ask? Well, there are so many benefits of biochar. Well, for one, the ecosystem of guts and animals is much like the ecosystem of soils. Animals and humans need bugs to digest food and absorb nutrients. Much like soils, the bugs and animal guts also need to be diverse so that harmful bugs are kept in check by beneficial bugs. So pretty much, biochar increases the habitat surface area of the gut with, on which beneficial microbes attach to get to work on digesting and cycling nutrients to be absorbed by the animal. In so many words, everyone, a piece of biochar is like a hotel for microbes. They all house in there and they just munch on the bad stuff. It's extremely, extremely healthy. And I tell you, when your livestock, even chickens, poop it out, it comes out inoculated, which a lot of people, well, probably not a lot of people, because a lot of people don't know about biochar, but you can use it in your gardens, which, and in, in doing so, you want to inoculate it and then put it in your soil. Each piece you see right here is pretty much a hotel. The house is just hundreds and thousands of microbes. So look it up, do some research. You can take my word for it, but I suggest you do your own research. But trust me, I would not be telling you this if I didn't do heavy, heavy research. I even made my own tort to make my own. Why buy it when I can make my own? And if you do choose to make your own, do not use pressure treated wood. You want to use wood that's either kiln dried or heat dried. And also get the nails out of the out of the wood if it has nails in it. So we're gonna just cut this short here. Just wanted to let you know that I give my chickens and pigs the biochar here. Oh, well, hello, Hazel. Nice to see you. Thank you. But I too have tasted it. It has zero taste. Um, I've heard of people brushing their teeth with it, but, um, Trust me, trust me everyone, it is awesome for your soils, it's awesome for your animals, and for chickens, it helps with so many issues chickens can have, whether it be manure issues, ammonia, you name it, biochar helps. So you can use this in conjunction with your apple cider vinegar and water, I've been doing so for the past two weeks. And I have seen major changes in my chicken's health, especially in the manure. Now, as far as the pig's health, they're healthy to begin with, but you'll notice when they eat it, their poop does come out dark, which is fine. So get down in that soil, it's already inoculated. Matter of fact, if you want, you can even take a rake and just hand rake it in the soil just to get it down in that soil so the microbes can start working on the soil. So, folks, trust me. Please trust me. Do some research. You'll love what you'll find. Don't buy biochar. Make your own tour. It is extremely cheap to make one, and it is very easy cook or should I say make your own biochar I have a tote full of it and it's lasting me for a year now all right thanks 
So we're here with Tim Beverly. He came out to look for the wedding ring that I lost when we were feeding, putting the uh, alfalfa in the feeder. So far, no luck. Out if you can eat this the pigs are getting a kick out of the whole uh, metal detector. They've never seen anything like it. And one likes my shoes here. Come on. Hannah. Nope, I don't mind petting you. Come on. All right, that's my point. Thank <laughs> you. 